Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm joined by my friend Julia, who I've also had on the channel a couple of times now. And we're going to be talking about exercise, all things exercise. So the forgotten, it's like a forgotten component of health, because often people fixate on like diet, sleep, but then if you're not exercising, it's just, it's, you're missing a piece. And for me personally, I've experienced a lot of benefits from exercise, and Julia the same. And today we're going to be sharing our experiences, some tips to make exercise more fun in your routine, and like some mindset shifts. And yeah, just by the end of the video, hopefully you guys will actually want to put those running shoes on and get out the door. <laughs> so yeah, um, Julia, before like uh, we hit record, you were saying like how much exercise has like impacted you positively recently. Like, what have you noticed like recently since being more active? Like, what kind of benefits have you experienced? I think the biggest one is just my mood. Like, overall, it's good. I have like short moments where I have like a low or a down. Of course, we get them all, especially now in the colder, grayer times. But then, like, my ability to step back into like a positive inner state. I just feel like that muscle is so much stronger because when we exercise so many endorphins, so much serotonin gets released. So when all of that is in our bloodstream, I just feel like I'm generally overall in a good mood. Um, and then obviously like physically a lot has improved as well. So I sleep way better. Um, I feel like because my sleep is so deep, I need less sleep. So now typically I wake up way earlier. And I also have found that it becomes easier for me to eat really well and to eat clean. Um, for some reason, I don't know, like, I just feel like there's some switch where you don't have as many cravings anymore. Have you noticed a similar thing with the cravings and exercise? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I've noticed, like, basically every area of my life. Like, it's amazing. And even digestion. Have you, have you, also, have you also noticed, like, when you exercise more, it just seems to digest easier. Yeah, um, bloating yeah. completely gone. Like the only times I ever get bloated is when I haven't had a day of exercise and I've maybe overeaten a little bit on that day, then I get bloating. But if I eat well and I exercise, then the bloating is just completely gone and digestion so smooth. So yeah, mm. have you noticed the same? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Basically everything you said. And it's, it's interesting because like for a lot of people, it seems like a chore, like we were saying before, like the, the mindset component, like it, it just seems like it's something you have to do. Like, oh, I know I should exercise either to like get fit or lose weight. But I think the biggest thing is the mindset, because if you've got the right mindset and a positive mindset towards exercise, it's actually when you miss exercising, it's like, oh, like, like if I miss a day of exercising now, it's like, it's really uh, it gets me down like <laughs> i'm like a bit not depressed but you know what i mean like it, it's not a good day um so yeah what how, how do you like what's your um mindset around exercise like yeah how do you how do you approach it when you think like oh tomorrow i'm gonna run or something do you look forward to it or does a part of you hate it or yeah yeah, I mean, in the very beginning, when I first started getting back into a running routine, it definitely hasn't been the way it is now because I haven't had these positive associations with running. So I was thinking about the part that requires effort, you know, getting on your running shoes and being outside. And of course, there are challenging times where you feel like you want to stop running. You just want to walk. These moments will happen. So I was more focused on that versus now my body has connected running so much to all the endorphins that get released. The incredible day and incredible mood I have when I come back home from the run, like everything that follows after the run is always so positive. So I, I guess I've just shifted my focus a lot more towards that aspect of it. And then another thing that has switched, I no longer use exercise as a means to get something. Even with the mood, it's not really a means to get the good mood. It's just part of it. Um, and back in the days, I used to use exercise in a way I thought, you know, it would be something that would make me lean and have a good physique. I think a lot of people associate that with that. And I guess when you're in the bodybuilding scene and you want to build muscle it probably is that way but I've just realized over time that exercise isn't like the best way to release weight the best way to release weight you know abs were made in the kitchen so when I really dialed that in and I no longer use 
um, the exercise as a way for that. Now it's not this chore because I know even if I don't exercise, you know, I can still get my goals. So it's more like something like brushing my teeth, like part of my routine in a way. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think that's quite important to focus on like the benefits you're going to get from it because like, it's like anything, if, if you want to um, do it, then focus on what you're going to get kind of like how you're going to feel after or, you know, the, the, all the benefits, whether it's like the social benefits, maybe you go to like a running club and you see like a friend or something like that, rather than like you say, putting on your running shoes, going out in the cold, like waking up early. Like if you focus on that, you'll talk yourself out of anything. Like, so yeah, I think that's huge. Um, and like you say, exercise is great, but you can't outrun like a bad diet. Like I think people say like 80% of the results are to do with um, nutrition and then 20% exercise. I'd say that's probably fair. Have you, yeah. yeah how, how often are you like active on a daily basis or a weekly uh, basis? What's like your kind of current routine? Yeah. Um, I try and get something in like every day, even if it's just a super quick, like five minute workout before breakfast where I do some jumping jacks and, you know, a couple of squats or some push ups or some pull ups. But typically I would say I, yeah, have six days a week where I do like a bigger workout. So um, currently I've really fallen in love with running, um, not right after waking up. First, I like to do a bit of stretching and then go for a run because then the day it just starts in such a nice tone. And especially now that there isn't any sun in the morning, really, when I get up, I just feel like the run is my sun. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, so every second or third day I go for a run. And then the other day I either do a strength workout with my resistance bands, which you've put together for me, or yeah, just a quick like 10 minute bike ride or something. And then a couple of times a month I ride to work, which is a 35 kilometer bike ride. So mm. that's also something I do. So how about you? What is your current workout routine look like at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say that's a good like um, range of exercises. I think for me personally too, having a, at least a few things to choose from just makes it a lot more fun and there's variety. Like if you don't feel like doing something in one day, then you can do something else. Um, but for me, like similar to yourself, even if it's gray, I like to get outside and like I have um, a skipping rope, a jump rope, people call it in other countries. And yeah, I try to do at least a thousand every morning, a thousand wow. jumps, which do you count? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, wow. I, I, that sounds like a lot. But once once you um, get the technique down, like I'm not a pro, but it's it's a lot easier. I started a few months ago and it's a lot easier. Like, because when you first start off, you're jumping really high to try to try um, get over the rope. But once you get a bit better, you, you use less energy to jump over the rope. So it's not as hard. But um, yeah, I'll do that. That takes about just under 10 minutes. And then oh, wow. most mornings I'll do um, resistance training similar to yourself. I do like a push pull leg split. And um, yeah, I'm not claiming to be like the most muscly guy, but it's been working for me. I've gained like nearly 35 pounds in probably seven or eight months. So it's, wow. it's yeah, it's coming together nicely. It's just um, training and eating enough and yeah, the results come. But that that's uh, a mixture of like body weight stuff and um, dumbbells as well, just like ones that I have at home. And I enjoy just, just a mixture of training styles. I don't like to like limit myself. Um, if people are familiar with like Bruce Lee, I kind of like his approach because he took different components from different um, realms and then combined them into one. And he was like a really good athlete. So yeah, um, skipping, resistance training, occasionally like once or twice a week, I'll do a few rounds on my uh, punching bag in the garden. Um, and I'm fortunate that my dad's a qualified boxing coach. So sometimes he takes me on the pads, which is quite, quite cool. Um, what else? Oh yeah, walks in nature. And yeah, I, I did used to run with my dad last uh, Christmas. We were out running, but then we were just like, we weren't enjoying it. <laughs> so we, we stopped that. But yeah, I think running is really good. It. Yeah. That's what I was actually going to ask you. Like, what what is it you do to enjoy running? Do you have music? Do you have podcasts? Do you just like sit there with your thoughts? Like, what, what do you do when you run? 
Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think there are two things. The first one is I run quite slowly, so I'm not completely out of breath. And I think that's something that would make me or that makes me enjoy it more because sometimes I do run faster and I just notice I don't enjoy the run as much. Um, so I focus on slow runs and yeah, typically no music. I was f today for the first time in forever thinking about bringing a, you know, podcast with me, but then I was thinking like, no, because even when I'm here in my apartment, you know, my neighbors make noises and there's always something running in the background when I'm here at home, I have my phone, my computer, and when I'm outside, it's the only time where I'm just completely in silence. There's just birds and nature and um, my own thoughts. So it's a great time for me to observe them and be with them and um, sometimes see how ridiculous my thoughts are. So I really like using that time for yeah reflection and word. And then sometimes when I really feel unmotivated, yeah, then I'll get some music or something going to... Um, yeah, keep me motivated. But I've really, in the last few weeks, started to learn to embrace silence, and it has had such a profound impact on my quality of life. Yeah. How about you when mm. you go for walks? Because that's something, for example, I don't enjoy as much. I don't enjoy going out for a walk as much. I don't know. To me, it's just kind of boring. So what do you do on your walks? Mm. Yeah, I agree. Just quickly with the stimulation aspect, like there was a time where every like second of the day, I was in like a learning phase, like podcasts or yeah, Same. audio books. Sort of thing. And I think that's useful at a time like where you feel like there is something you're really eager to learn about. Like for me, nutrition, like diet and things like that. I used to consume like hours every day. Um, now I've taken a bit more of a backseat. But yeah, when I, when I exercise, like when I'm walking, sometimes I'm walking with my family, like if it's in the morning time, which is nice. So we just chat and lecture each other and <laughs> try not to argue and um if i go on my own um i used to listen to podcasts uh, or yeah something like that and sometimes if i was like interviewing a guest later on i'd listen to like a previous podcast from them just so i could get a bit of um yeah just a bit of research just so i wasn't coming in like a raw novice but um sometimes i film a video if i'm walking like if i've got a few planned out and then other times i just um like now I just don't have any stimulation and I just walk and enjoy the nature. But yeah, it is, it's, um, it's uncomfortable, especially if you've got like thoughts, kind of like a thought loop in your head, like just say there's something on your mind, like, you know, being alone with your thoughts for most people, they can't sit with their thoughts. And yeah, I think I'm now at a stage where I can, but like, you know, a few years ago when I was younger or something, I always had to be doing something um but yeah I think so you said you don't, you're not a big fan of walking yeah I don't know I personally if I already make an effort and I set time aside I like it to be something a bit more where I sweat and it's mm -hmm. a bit more intensive yeah. I guess but what I do like when I'm with other people like I love going for walks with friends or family and just talk I guess that's definitely something I enjoy. But yeah, just on my own. It's not that I don't enjoy it, but I just prefer the other stuff. So that's why I do it. And I think that's such an important key when it comes to exercise. Like if you don't enjoy something, you absolutely do not have to do it. Then find something you prefer over that. Um, but something I would actually be curious to hear from you is like, if you exercise every day, how do you do it with recovery? Because I think that's why I tend to split up days. Like one day I go running, then I do strength training so that my body has time to recover. How do you deal with that? Or has your body already adapted to the daily exercise so you no longer feel like you're in a way destroying your muscles so that it needs time to recover afterwards? Mm. Yeah, definitely. It's a, um, it's a mixture. Like in the summer and when I was, yeah, when I was like fully raw every single day, and plenty of sun, things like that. Like I could easily work out every day. Like, and I think because I was like a beginner, like when you're a beginner working out, you're not, you're, you're not like lifting as heavy or you're not doing as intense things just because you can't and your joints don't take as much of a toll. But, um, yeah, recently, like I do like three or four days on and then one day off. Um, but on the off day, I might do some like skipping and then, um, work on the, punch bag or I'll do something I don't have like a 
a day where I just lay around like I can't do that anymore and yeah. I just know there's too many benefits um, to exercising so if I need to I will take a rest day but I'd, I'd say being fully raw versus like high raw there's definitely definitely noticeable impact and also the lack of sunlight like you're in Germany I'm in the UK it's um, nearly uh, November now so I personally do notice it takes longer to recover without the sun um have you also observed that or yeah yeah 1000 percent. like today i was actually planning to do rest day because yesterday i did strength and i just felt like my muscles weren't fully recovered but even though i was planning i woke up and because it's already in my routine from the summertime where i literally didn't need any rest days i just feel like i just had to go on that run you know so um yeah so but i do feel like now my legs are a bit like um tired and like i've used them for sure mm. so yeah it's it is amazing how adaptable and malleable the body is though like to whatever requirements we we like ask of it like the first week or so i'm not sure if it was the same for you but when you start like a new exercise routine the the nervous system like it, it gets hit like a truck like you're really sore even though you haven't done that much but it's like mm. anything the more you do it it just becomes easier um, yeah, for sure. Mm. And let's say you had like a really like bad day, you feel really <laughs> unmotivated, you don't want to go out and do something. What do you do to get yourself in the right headspace to do it anyway? Mm. Yeah, it's don't get me wrong. If I'm like really under the weather, like really off form, then I will take a rest day. But um, I just I like to familiarize myself with the benefits or the reason why I'm doing it like having having a reason why is, is huge but especially because I'm making content now like because I'm um, trying to help others and inspire others and share my journey I feel like it's necessary for me to live up to like what I'm talking about like if, if I'm saying I eat like a healthy diet or something and I'm going off and eating cookies and things it's not the best and if I stay at exercise and I don't for me personally, I, I can't sleep at night if I'm not um, holding the promises that mm -hmm. that I'm saying I do, like, and the promises that, you know, I keep to myself. If I can keep them, then it makes me feel better. And I just know, just from experience, once I'm out there and I'm exercising, I'm going to feel so much better. Like, I've never felt worse after a workout or a walk or, like, physically. Um, and, yeah, how, how about you? Yeah, it's the same. Like, even while I'm doing the exercise, I already feel good. It's really just that first step. And I've also found that what really helps is to set a structure in place that allows me to do that on a regular basis. So, you know, going to bed before midnight, 1000%, even like on Christmas and these kinds of days, I, you know, do my best to go to bed before midnight um, because if I go to bed after that, I'm no longer having that environment set up where I could exercise the next day. And yeah, putting my running clothes or my workout clothes out the evening before and already knowing, okay, in the evening, preparing myself mentally tomorrow, I'm going to do it um, is really helpful. And then, yeah, even if I have a bad day, like I had today, I'm no longer even thinking about if I'm going to do it. I'm just like doing it anyway. It's like an over it. <laughs> so um yeah, that's been really helpful. Um, yeah, I'd definitely say just um, on that point, like setting up the next day, the night before, like setting up tomorrow, tonight, definitely helps. I agree with that as well. Like whether that's just writing out a plan of what you're going to do tomorrow or just, just like you say, going to bed early. Like if you go to bed at a reasonable time, it sets up the next day for success. And it's, it's, it's difficult because there's so much stimulation. Like never before would we have been able mm -hmm. to like watch Netflix at night. It probably would have just been like read under candlelight or talk by the campfire and then go to bed. But yeah, it's um, what time do you typically aim to go to bed at? Right now I'm aiming for like 9 p.m. because wow. with the work I do, I need to get up at six on some days and I don't like to have too much fluctuation. But currently what I'm able to is like 10, 1030. So I'm still like, that is the habit that I'm currently building to go to bed earlier because I know it'll just allow for so much more success and just more ease and effortlessness in my life. Um, so yeah, what about you? When do you typically go to bed? 
Yeah, anywhere from like nine thirty to ten thirty as well. I think I think anywhere in the ten range is fine. Once you start getting to like eleven, twelve, yeah. I definitely feel it. But yeah, I find if I go to bed too early, then I just I don't know. I don't. I'm not quite as tired. But that just might be because of my body clock. Like I'm sure if I went to bed at nine, then I'd probably the next day um, get tired around the same time. Have you also yeah. noticed that with food, like with the the hunger hormone, like ghrelin, like for me, if I eat at a certain time in the morning, then the next day I'm hungry that time. Have you also observed that? Not necessarily. It really depends because on the days where I do wake up at six to go to work, um, which is only a few days of the month, I eat earlier as well. But then the next day when I sleep in, then I no longer have that need. So mm. I think it also depends a lot on the sleep. Um, but that's actually something I wanted to mention with planning the day before. I think as you say, you can use that for whatever goal you're working on um, to, like, even if it's diet, um, writing down or putting out the food on the counter you're going to eat the next day, planning that, or if it's mm. sleep, like, that's probably something I should do as well, like, plan the day before, okay, how am I going to make it happen that I go to bed early the next day? So that's just something, mm. you know, it's such a powerful tool to do that the day before. And again, with the exercise same like you can do that there as well mm -hmm. yeah because just on the plan and the structure and like routine i think a lot of people they think it's like rigid and they think it's like if you have a plan or a structure it's like not fun and it's really restrictive but for me i, I find it gives me more freedom because it takes the, the uh, decision making out of it like if i was yeah. every morning like to wake up and go oh like what do I, what, what am i going to do I feel like it would expend so much energy just kind of like thinking about it. Whereas um, for me, having a plan in place, like it just, it's kind of like I'm in planning mode, then I'm in execute mode. And then when I'm in execute mode, I just execute on the plan that I've designed the night before. But I also think being adaptable is good as well. Like yeah. if something comes up, obviously you're not going to be like, oh, I said I was going to work out at 10, 1030 and, you know, grandma's come around and it, now I'm going to have to work out at 10.35. Like, you have to be adaptable. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, I think like a good balance of going with the flow and, you know, doing what comes up, what wants to be done, but then still having some sort of structure mm. is really, to me, is really like important. Because if I had no structure for the things that are like daily essentials for me now, like nutrition, you know, grocery shopping and um, cleaning my apartment and like working out, then I couldn't really enjoy the times where there is no structure as much anymore because everything would be so like, I don't know, so chaotic in my life. So to me, like having a little bit of structure is definitely, yeah, really important. <laughs> mm, yeah, a hundred percent. I think like you say, just the balance of all things. Um, and yeah, I just think having little little things like you alluded to earlier, things that you actually enjoy, not what like the health guru said is like the best form of exercise. It's like what you actually want to do and what you enjoy. And yeah, what have you got any tips that you personally use to make exercise fun or anything like that? I think something you mentioned in the beginning of like putting in a lot of variety um, is helpful. So I do a lot of different things. Like I do the strength, I do running, cycling, I even do like inline skating. So there's always something and then also making it somewhat non-negotiable. So like when I want to get groceries, I need to either walk, cycle or, you know, do something like that to get there um, or to work, cycle, except when it's raining, then I, of course, <laughs> I'm not taking my bike. Um, yeah, just incorporating it in there. And um, yeah, I mean, and then also either having like learning to be with your thoughts and really enjoying and appreciating the silence, or if that's not something that's like available, then, you know, I, I also have periods where I would listen to music or a podcast or something. Um, and I think just embracing that and going with what feels aligned with you and not doing it so much because someone else says it. Yeah. What about you? What are some mm. ways for you that you make it more enjoyable? Yeah, I, th I think initially it even starts for me, like with a mindset, seeing exercise as like more of like a, a privilege or like a blessing, like something we're fortunate enough to be able to do. Because like, 
you know, there's times, don't get me wrong, where I'm I'm a little bit ungrateful. But then for some people, they genuinely can't exercise. Maybe they're like wheelchair bound. Maybe they had an accident. I don't know what their situation is. But, you know, if we do have the blessing of this body, I think if we don't use it, then it's a real shame. And I think yeah. having that mindset, it makes every day you're able to exercise. It makes it a lot more fun. Um, and then also, I guess, seeing progress seeing progress is really addictive whether that's like shedding weight whether it's building muscle whether you just get a little bit stronger maybe the run you do it a little bit quicker or it feels a little bit easier it's quite addictive because it's like gamifying the process and I think the more you can make it like a game and fun like when you're a kid when you were a kid like when you were a child um, you know exercising or playing sport it was so enjoyable and so fun because you just didn't really care so I think just I guess not being so outcome dependent, but just just um, just knowing that every every day you'll just show up, do your best, even if you're not a hundred percent that day. Just knowing that you will give it a hundred percent effort, even if you're not feeling a hundred percent, that's good. And yeah, when I'm working out, because um, I work out at home, I put music on and I really enjoy that. Um, but yeah, if people want to be alone with their thoughts or in the silence then even better like fighting your demons then cool um <laughs> it, it's their own but yeah I think sport as well if, if there's a sport that you enjoy that's a good way of like being social and just like a lot of sports like when I used to play football like I stopped enjoying it um recently but when I used to play it is a good way to get cardio in as well because when you're chasing the ball you're not really thinking about the run you're just thinking about the ball so I think mm -hmm. just just doing things that kind of disguise the fitness is really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess well. similar to what I alluded to with the uh, cycling, like I need to move in order to get to grocery yeah. shopping. So I'm no, no, not even thinking that I'm moving right now. It's just like, mm. you know, it's just a way to get there. So and then I guess the same with the ball. Mm -hmm. And yeah, don't get me wrong. Like I do, like when I do my strength workout, I still listen to music sometimes. It's just like I've come to a point where I just no longer feel like doing that always, but mixing it up sometimes. I'm in silence. Sometimes I'm listening to music. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There's no right or wrong. I don't think there's any. Just whatever works yeah. best for you and your goals. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how about nutrition? Do you typically train fasted in the morning, or do you eat something before you start? Yeah, so probably for the first few months, I was um, working out in the middle of the day just because of schedule and I thought I'd try it out. And I think I'm a little bit stronger just because I've got more like muscle glycogen and uh, stores to tap into. Um, and some people say you build more muscle if you train fed, like so if you've got the, the glucose and the glycogen in your system. Mm -hmm. But yeah. It's. I think it's very minimal. Like recently, the last month or so, I've been training in the morning um, and fasted. And then I think as long as you just eat half an hour to an hour after, you'll be fine. Like because you're feeding the muscle tissue and you're just recovering. Um, but yeah, I think I personally enjoy training in the morning first thing more fasted because it sets the day off right. I'm not sure if it's the same for you, but if I can like exercise early on, everything else for the rest of the day is like going to be better like my mood's going to be better I'm probably going to be like more articulate like my memory's going to be better it's um the link between exercise and and you know the mind is like really powerful so yeah for me I think training fasted even though it might not be like optimal it's um it's what works best for me how how about you yeah everything you said just resonated so much with me like I could probably also run way faster if I had a routine where I eat before my runs, which I have had in the past, but then you always need to think and plan way more because you don't want to run right after eating and then it has to fit into your other tasks that you have set out for the day um, and into your schedule. So now I was just like, screw all that. Like, I'm just going to go run before breakfast. And then I also just enjoy my breakfast like so much more because I really feel like, you know... Um, like the tank is empty it wants fuel so everything just tastes so good when you have done some exercise before um getting into your first meal of the day so yeah and 
typically when I when I'm done with my workout I take like a quick five minute shower and then I immediately eat so it's not like too big of a break between like um waking up and having my first meal which I like um so yeah I think personally right now I also have come to a place where I like to do it first thing in the morning because then it's like yeah you feel like so accomplished already so early on and then everything else in the day just gets so much better so Mm, yeah definitely and yeah I think I think like if you're doing hours and hours of cardio like if you're going to be running like a 10k in the morning or like you've got a marathon or a half marathon or you're (laughs) you're playing a football match like if you've got a morning football match then yeah obviously you want to eat something but yeah if I think if you're doing anything an hour or under you'll be fine energy wise like or that's what I've found anyway yeah that's actually also something about making it more fun like less is more so um I don't run much it's like just a 30 minute 5k run um you know super slow and also like a couple of days ago I was like on a seminar and the people asked because I said you know I'm a yoga teacher if we could do like some yoga afterwards and then I said sure um and then they wanted to do like half an hour and everything and everyone was already tired and wanted to go home and I was like you know guys less is more let's just do like a five minute quick thing after that we're gonna feel so good and that's also a realization I have more and more just less is more you know you don't have to um, overexert yourself or do so much or do more than you capable of maybe physically but just do what's available to you and then you're going to feel golden so mm. yeah. yeah definitely and something on that you can um break stuff up you can chunk it like for example if you don't have like one hour in a row but you know the workout is going to take like an hour you could do like 30 minutes, 40 minutes in the morning. And then like Mm. before lunch, if you had like a spare 15, 20 minutes, you could do it. That's what I do for like abs. So like today I did legs. And then later on after this, I'm going to do like just 15 minutes of abs. And that way it staggers it. It's what a lot of athletes do too. So they might like train in the morning, then they'll have like team training after. And that when you split it up, it gives you more more manageable chunks. Um, And I've also heard of some people, they do like, uh, you know, they just go to the toilet at work or something and they, they'll do like push ups, then then like on their lunch break they'll do pull ups. So there's always like ways to to fit it in. It's just just about getting creative. Mm. Yeah, I love those suggestions and ideas. And that reminds me like one time um when I was cleaning my apartment, I was kind of cleaning in the breaks of my sets. So I would also do like <laughs> some push ups in between and then I would clean the kitchen and then I would do the pull-ups and then I would clean the floor and uh, so but I no longer do that because I like to not be so overstimulated but if you don't have any time at all that's also something that's like possible Mm -hmm. to incorporate it yeah and also stretching in between sets Mm, yeah good like way of um just getting some passive stretching in while you're recovering I think Yeah. yeah where there's a will there's a way like you will find a way if you if you value it but I think the reason why people like procrastinate and in, in anything in life is because we don't feel like one, like the benefits are going to be like instant. We love instant benefits or two, it, that it's even worth it. Like if you don't, if you don't really think exercise is going to be that good, you, you won't do it. But when you, when you have a day of exercising and a day of not exercising it's for me, it's like really clear, like difference in mood. Have yeah. you observed that? Yeah, same. And I also think maybe because I had a period in my life where I was sedentary and um, maybe like doing something once a week or something. And I think it had also a lot to do with like my environment. Um, Mm -hmm. It wasn't set up in a way where it would allow me to do that daily. And then also like the people I was surrounded by, which were amazing people, they just had different interests. Um, and you know, we were more into making music and doing all that stuff, which is great as well, I think. But recently I've just started hanging out more with people who are really into, you know, health and nutrition and fitness. And I think that has also impacted me. So going like on fruit fests or going to gatherings where there are other fit athletes and people who are into that stuff, I think for me has been very helpful to become more active for sure. So. Mm. 
Yeah, I think environment is key, definitely. And even just setting yeah. up like your your immediate environment, like putting the, the dumbbells or putting the pull-up bar on the door frame or putting your shoes by the door, just simple things. And you can also flip that. Like if you don't want to eat the cookies and like let's say for some reason you live with someone and you can't throw them out, put the cookies somewhere like right at the back of the cupboard or something out of sight and then put put the skipping rope by the door, put the dumbbells on the floor, like put the mat on the floor. Like there's so many things you can do just to just kind of make it easier for yourself. Um, yeah. Have you, yeah. you've got a door, uh, doorway pull up bar, haven't you or something? Seen, yeah, yeah it's actually on that door. <coughs> oh yeah so, yeah mm -hmm. so sometimes when i walk past i just hang yeah there yeah it's a good thing up. it's a good thing to do sometimes i do it because you know if you do that like every time you walk through the door you do a pull up or a push up or a squat you know by the end of the day you'll have at least double digit you know you have at least 10 um yeah, yeah it's just okay. just about incorporating it isn't it making it just more of a lifestyle I think... Yeah, making it part of our everyday life. I think with everything, like whether that's changing nutrition and diet or incorporating more exercise or more, you know, mindfulness into our life, even though I don't like that word because it indicates that our mind is full, but it's <laughs> <laughs> always what, like Eckhart Tolle says. But yeah, incorporating whatever it is into into our routine, like as closely as we can mm -hmm. yeah so i guess like takeaways for people like if um let's say someone's like really overwhelmed and they're they're thinking like okay what should i do to be like healthy or whatever are there any kind of um what what, what would you say like if we could have like a general framework like for me i'm thinking like every day I either do like a walk a run or cycle something like that gets your heart going and then like maybe three, four times a week, do something like resistance training or strength training. And then like, other than that, just things you enjoy, maybe like dance or things like that. Um, are there any, yeah, like general rules you have for people or you found is useful for yourself, like in a week? Yeah, I think really in the beginning, just focusing on simplicity and the simple, small things, even if it's just five minutes, just to get like the habit going and to set up a system and then when that routine is established then it can be helpful to see if we want to expand it that's how I did it and also I got like a commitment buddy so a friend of mine who lives close by I told him I want to get into running so we would just go running together three times a week and that was hugely beneficial because he had already set up that routine of running three times a week so um, when the time would be we would go running together and then you know half a year later I felt like okay now I got the routine down and now I can just continue on my own so yeah having someone whether that's you know a friend or someone online just having someone who kind of helps you stay in that loop I think can also be helpful because the power of people it's just incredible so yeah mm, absolutely yeah I think that accountability aspect I think that's often the missing piece for like most people because I'm sure we could all agree like if we live with David Goggins it wouldn't even be like a question whether we exercise every day so it's just about yeah just kind of creating that in your environment like you say yeah haven't, 1000 percent. whether that's even even online it can be enough like initially like an accountability partner or something online um yeah i think that's key are there any other yeah. takeaways for people tips mindset tips strategies no, we covered a good amount so hopefully everyone enjoyed it and of course let us in the comments know if you're already a big exerciser what are your tips mm. <laughs> And yeah, where can people find you or what have you got going on if people want to? Um, yeah, that. just on my YouTube channel, Julie Sana. I upload a video every Wednesday and Saturday. And I also send out a weekly Monday motivation. So I have an email newsletter where you can sign up as well. <laughs> nice. Yeah. What about you? you? Where can oh, you thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be uploading it to my channel too. Yeah. So. yeah. No, that's all good. I was going to just quickly plug my community um if people are like missing that accountability or support then you might be able to find like an accountability buddy in there i'll leave that top link in the description and yeah, yeah. hopefully we've given some 
the people at least one takeaway and just make exercise a bit more fun. And yeah, enjoy well, your you day, everyone. You get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. And yeah, peace and love, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much for watching.